All right, hey guys, what's going on? It's Chris from Dream Media Home Theater. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about anamorphic lenses. Specifically, today we're gonna to be talking about the Panamorph DCR lens. This will, this information will translate into the, the Paladin, as well as the ISCO, whichever type of anamorphic glass that you're looking at, or anamorphic lens. Um, every single time that this subject comes up, it seems like no one really understands what these things do. So what I'm gonna try to do in this video is make it quick and easy to digest for you guys so you can figure out if a DCR lens is right for you, if it's not right for you. We're gonna talk about all that. We'll get into it right after the intro. All right guys, let's jump into this video real quick. So let's just start at the beginning. We'll talk about some quick formats and then we'll jump into the, the, the meat of this video. So with a, um, you're used to watching 16 by nine, right? You have bought a TV, you know, roughly in the last, I guess, what, 15 years, they've been in, you know, the 16 by nine, you know, widescreen type format. So that's what you're used to. You know, you watch your Big Bang Theory on it, you watch the news on it, um, all that stuff will fill up your entire screen, right? The only difference is, is whenever you're not watching um, 16 by nine content on that TV. So whenever you're watching a movie, that's an ultra wide, which is 235 or 240 as it would be, then you're gonna have black bars at the top and bottom. So again, you bought, you spent all this money on your fancy 4K TV, right? Whenever you're watching the news, you're getting your full 4K resolution. Whenever you're watching a movie that you'll, you will see black bars at the top and bottom, you're losing that resolution. It, it doesn't go to, to fill up the entire screen with you know the Captain America you know, smacking around some people. With those black bars, you're losing those pixels on a TV. You're losing the pixels on the bottom on a TV, depending on if you have local array dimming or if you have an OLED or not, you could be affecting the overall contrast of the TV itself because it physically has to cast that black stuff. Like it's, it's not like they just turn them off. You, you, ha you have to be able to have your brightness on that line. So it's, it gets a little convoluted. So what I'm trying to say. So um, keep that in the back of your mind. I'm gonna circle back around to it whenever we start talking about projectors. With the projector, the projector is a little bit different, right? This is just an aid I pulled out. It's, it's a tray table from my Valencia seats here. Um, this is roughly the shape of your reflective device in your projector. So a projector has reflective devices in there and they are a fixed shape. Same thing as your TV. It's a fixed shape, you can't change it. So it's constantly going to be you know, shining this type of image or the shape of an image. With you physically being um, kind of locked in to, a, a, to one shape, right? Even if the formats change, which they have different heights on the formats, the width doesn't change. And we'll talk about that again in a minute. With, with those changing formats, typically what you do is you don't need to buy a lens to fill up your screen. So you can have a lens memory. It's a feature in a lot of the projectors that come out in the last you know, several years that you can basically press one button and it'll go from 16 by nine to a 235. With your reflective devices, it's constantly going to be shining. It's constantly going to be casting this shape of an image. Well, to get that to happen, what you're gonna do is you will have a super big 16 by nine image. And even though you have the black bars at the top and bottom, whenever, it, whenever you kind of shape it up on, onto your screen, those black bars, they don't go away. They're constantly being sh sh shown, <laughs> projected onto the walls, right? So you don't see it, it's very dim, but uh, you know, some people will put the, the LED lights behind your, your screen. And you know, if, if you're not sensitive to it, you probably won't even notice it, but you're losing that, it's lost. So again, like I was talking about, you bought your fancy native 4K projector and you wanna watch, you know, you wanna watch movies only. And you're like, oh, well I bought it native 4K because it's better than, than non-native 4K. So that doesn't really stand to reason because you're not watching 4K anymore. So again, like I was talking about, you lose all those pixels that are, that are the cast in black, projected in black. You're losing them on the top and the bottom. You're losing pixel density. You're losing brightness because again, um, whenever you have, whenever you're casting, that part of the reflective device is physically projecting black. This part that isn't projecting black, this, whenever it has that steep grade from black to, to colors, that's gonna affect your, your image as well. So you, you affect the contrast, you affect the pixel density, you affect the overall brightness of your entire image. Okay guys, if I haven't lost you yet, I made an entire blog about this subject and it's on the website. You guys can check it out. I'll leave a link down in the description so you guys can read it. And if you don't learn by watching things, if you learn by reading things, 
Whichever way helps you consume the information and make it make sense to you is why we're doing this multi-platform type of approach to things. I'm gonna make the room really dim and then we're gonna talk about some of the benefits of using a lens because we've kind of already figured out that uh, we're losing the brightness, we're losing pixel density, and we're losing overall contrast. So I'm gonna show you guys what it means whenever it's attached to a projector itself. All right guys, so I went ahead and made everything dark and I fired the, the, the setup up. What I wanted to do is, I wanted, I think I actually missed something. Whenever I was talking about your reflective device, right? So let's bring our old friend reflective device back out here. This is at a constant height. This does not change. This top and bottom height doesn't change, right? So whenever you're physically using, um, um, when, whenever you're physically projecting a 235, 240 movie, like, you know, we have right behind us, but you know, this is the movie, um, this is the menu setting or the menu. So it's not gonna be in full 235, right? So whenever you're using your uh, reflective device, you're gonna have those black bars at the top and at the bottom, right? What you do is, is you go into your projector and you tell it, you tell it to fill up the height. So since this is black bars, this is black bars, you basically tell it, hey, I want you to squeeze up and you're gonna squeeze top and bottom and you're gonna fill up this entire height, right? So once you do that, your lens will fill, will basically de-squeeze it and make it wide, ultra wide content. So that's basically what you have to do. You have to go in there and you have to tell it. So once it's on anamorphic, as you'll see right there, you can have it off and you can still enjoy, you know, your 16 by nine content with your lens installed. It's not gonna, it's, it's, not, it's not gonna ruin your experience. So now once you put it to anamorphic C, and since it's, this is still the menu setting, it's not gonna look perfect, it'll fill up your entire image and you're not gonna have any overscan at the top, any overscan at the bottom. Since this is still 16 by nine, let's make the point even better whenever we're watching the movie. When you're in 16 by nine mode, again, this would be wasted real estate, right? So since you're at a constant height, which would fill up the entire screen, you're gaining this um, pixel density, which basically you're gaining your resolution. This resolution, this resolution, you're actually gonna be gaining that back. So, cause you're telling your projector not to, to waste those top and bottom black bars. So whenever you go in there and you tell it to do that, you're going to increase your overall brightness. You're going to capture that resolution again, which basically means your 4K movie is 4K on your screen finally. And then, you know, you don't have to worry about the loss in uh, contrast and then the color is just gonna pop off the screen. And if you, guys, <laughs> if you guys haven't done this before, you guys are looking into your projector, you will notice that it's, it's, not, it's not comfortable to look into your projector. Once you put a lens on there, cause like I was talking about, it increases your overall brightness, you will notice that <laughs> there is a fair amount of difference in looking directly down the barrel into the projector. It's not <laughs> a pleasant experience if you guys have ever done it, but uh, that's, that's basically, the, it, it, you don't need any fancy meters to tell you that the brightness has been increased. Um, I, I guess it's kind of a, uh, an easy way to figure out how, how long it takes your vision to go back to normal um, is, is what it tells you that it actually increases your brightness. But I think that's about it. So let's, let's wrap this video up. I, w I just wanted to show this off a couple of times, just let you guys know that you can still enjoy, you know, your movies, your sports. So whenever you're watching your TV, right, it's still going to fill up the top and bottom. So you, you don't have to worry about that you will still have just a little sliver, right, of, uh, of, of um, left and right, top and, or of black bar on the left and right, but that's not really a big deal. And then whenever you, you wanna go back and watch movies after you're done watching your sports, you press it on anamorphic C, you're ready to go. Another workaround would be, is you can, you can save different installation modes. So I have it saved under ins, um, lens on this one right now. This is, I don't recommend it doing this way because it takes a really long time because it's racking focus. It's making sure that the, 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 um, the size is, uh, is perfect. It's making sure that the position is perfect and it's making sure that all your settings that you had from before are perfectly recreated and this takes a really long time. But then again, like I was talking about, it does remember that you didn't have that anamorphic on there. So if you wanted to do that every single time you could, you could you know, just press it in here, your setting memory and then you, you'll be ready to go after that. But I think it takes too long and I don't necessarily like doing it. So I can just tell it setting memory, there you go.
So you guys tell it whichever one you want to do. Well, all right, guys, I think that's going to wrap today's video up. If this was helpful, please let us know down in the comments. I made this video specifically to help help people understand the reasons why to go to uh, anamorphic lens. And if you need one, and if you don't need one, they are expensive, so it's definitely a luxury. And they do fit, spit a specific purpose because you do get a better overall experience out of it. But you know, you and your budget needs to figure out if that, if that experience is worth the cost for you. Um, usually whenever you start going down the rabbit hole of going ultra wide, um, you know, you, you really want to get the absolute most out of your picture possible. And for a lot of people, this makes sense. And for me, it makes sense. I love mine. I've had this thing in the house and I, I, I love it every single time I watch a movie. It legitimately gives you so much more color pop. And this is a black diamond, right? 1.4 gain black diamond. So you need light to light up a black diamond, right? You need ambient light in there. Since I controlled all the light in this room, now it's not really an area of concern. But if you had like a, like a Stewart, like a 1.3 Studio Tech uh, G4, then you know you're still going to get that increase in brightness. But whenever you add the lens to it, it's going to add to it even more. So I mean, it really just depends on where you want to be with your black levels as well as your overall experience. This one, to me, a black diamond 1.4. If you're watching in a completely black room, you know it. It's a little dimmer. So um, it really makes sense to increase your brightness if you need to. And if you do have an ambient light, you know, uh, a lot of ambient light issues, then you would be grabbing in a, a black diamond screen and you would want that bump in brightness because you're gonna need all the brightness you can get because <laughs> you're basically losing it to all the different areas of light that are coming in and affecting the image on the screen. So it's a balance and there's different things to approach like that. But I wanted to make this video to see if you, um, to help you guys understand what the benefits were of having, you know, a lens. If you guys need one, if you don't need one, and uh, if, if the point got lost, let us know down in the comments. We'd be happy to make even more videos, or if you guys are lost even more, pick up the phone, shoot us an email, and we'd be happy to help you out. Also, if you guys wanna buy one of these, we sell all kinds of ones. If you don't need the, the flagship glass, the DCR from Panamorph, we sell the Paladins. We also have the, um, the model-specific ones for Sony, model-specific ones for JVC, and then, you know, it, it pretty much just goes on from there. But I really appreciate you guys for watching. And if you guys want to buy into this stuff, we'll leave links down in the description. Also, links are going to be to the description to the blog as well. Really appreciate you guys for watching. Catch you next time.